So look, it's uh, one start. It's exciting. It, it's, it was the big move of the trade deadline. So how do we assess uh, Zach Greinke's debut tonight, D? It's not bad. And, and he went up against a team that's very familiar with them. He has 34 career starts. He had changed speed. He kept the ball down for the most part, but then he got tired towards the back end of his start. But I think he's going to be fine. He's going to be comfortable. I like him in that third spot in that rotation. You match him up with anybody in the third spot, he's nine times out of ten. He's going to win that matchup. They're going to put a lot of uh, runs up against that opposing pitcher. I think he's going to be just fine. They're athletic all over the field, so he's going to get a ton of ground ball outs. He's going to be fine. Yeah, he's going to be great. He's a, he's a really good pitcher. And, you know, he goes to a staff that he's going to learn from those guys, even though he's, his, uh, you know, a great big leaguer himself. But, you know, those guys feed off each other. And you talk about the farther they get down the line, the closer they get to postseason. You know, I saw Zach Greinke pitch in the postseason. He can be di real dangerous. You know, you mentioned him being the number three. So, uh, obviously, when he was in L.A., he was the two, right, behind Kershaw. And then in Arizona, he was the one. Mm -hmm. Uh, a little different here, but he'll be in the playoffs. But a as a three, is that that big of a difference in terms of mindset, in terms of the pressure on him or in the postseason? Well, he's obviously he comes to the team where he's not the number one or number two, and he doesn't have to be the man. So that's a lot of pressure off the shoulders. And also, when you're going up against the matchup of the number three guy, you feel more confident that you can score more runs, so you have more wiggle room to make mistakes, and you don't have to pitch as perfect. Also for him, that's the first time he's thrown to guys in Houston. So once they realize how his ball moves, how he wants to work, how he works out of jams, he'll start to settle in. So I, I'm not going to worry about this start too much. I think you're right, a -train. He, You know, the other, you saw some early in the game, he got some backdoor breaking balls for easy ground balls. And, you know, they're going to start to, just like you said, the catchers are going to start to figure what he needs to do to get outs. And, you know, Zach Greinke is going to be fine. He, he's sitting there saying, hey, look, I can give up a few runs, but this team's good enough that, you know, make up for it. Yeah, Arizona has a good offense. Uh, that's the most run support he's gotten all year. So he'll uh, settle in, uh, Zach Greinke, tonight. We'll keep you updated. We ask you surprise and you're not because of why? Because this team was built around pitching, and in the first half, you saw their pitching struggles. Even Jake DeGrom had a, had a tough time early in the season. Yeah. And Noah had a tough, tough time. This team was built by, around their pitching. Their bullpen was in a little bit of disarray in the first half. In the second half, those starting pitchers, you're watching it on a nightly basis now. They're red hot. They're, they're, they're going out there. They're giving, I mean, we're not talking five innings. These guys are going seven, eight innings into a game, one run, no runs, keeping the team in the, in the, you know, in the game and giving them a chance that one or two runs wins ball games for you. And when you're on the offensive side of the baseball, you're saying, hey, we got Jake tonight. We got Syndergaard tonight. Hey, we go score a couple runs. We're going to win. It takes a lot of pressure off the offense. Yeah, you come to the park every single day knowing that you can win that ball game because you believe in the guy on that mound. You can throw quality every single day. They go deep in the ball games and they're competing with each other and they take pride in that. Now that makes Skip job easier because now he can manage his bullpen to the matchups that he wants to mm -hmm. because the starter's going deep in. But I tell you what, DeGrom, Stroman with his energy and his presence in there, being a hometown kid. I tell you, Wheeler's nasty. If they stay healthy, they are right there. And you can see the energy over there at City Field. Now the fans are starting to believe in them and they're like, this is the group that we believe in and this is the energy. So New York can turn into a daunting place if they all believe and they all buy in, and that's what's going on right now. You got some life. You know, Kevin, I, I'll tell you what. You know, we, I, when I was there in 15, we were below 500 in the second half. We ended up going to the World Series. But just like Don Trell said, there's, there's energy in the clubhouse. But let me tell you what. Brody Van Wagen, give him a little credit. He's been taking a beating in New York because the, some of the deals didn't look good. But I'll tell you one thing. He stuck with them. He said, I support you. I back you up. Here's some confidence. And by the way, I'm going to go get an extra piece. I'm not giving up, guys. And that day after that trading deadline, you saw the quotes from the players. Hey, we're all still here. We can do this. And all of a sudden, they, everything has changed. It's a great point, you know, because he was getting killed for the Cano trade. The DS trade hasn't worked out. But boy, all of a sudden, if they go on a big playoff run, it looks like a genius, right? Giving the team a little bit of life here. The Mets red hot.